my good friend Kathy Adams has had the experience for many years of uh, developing some political enemies, but Kathy keeps going. Kathy's going to talk to you today about illegal immigration and what the focus should be on. Kathy and I were together last summer in July. We went to the border with Brandon Darby, and you know the story of that. Kathy has not ceased to talk about the dangers of a wide open border, that it undermines our state sovereignty. And I will tell you that the reason that Richard Perry is as low as he is in the polls is because the American people understand this. The Texas border, no, minute, no, no matter how many ads Rick Perry runs to say that he secured the border, the American people know the Texas border has not been secured. Words mean things, and it is dangerous for any politician, a former politician asking for you to hire him to be president, or any of our current statewide leaders to tell you that the Texas border is secure when it is not. It is a dangerous thing. Kathy, my dear, please come up and uh, make your presentation. Kathy's a wonderful friend, and I'm happy, happy, happy to have her back with us today. God bless you, Kathy. just uh, really retire at this point and, and pass the baton and uh, everything is going to be just fine under Joanne Fleming. And I agree with you concerning not only Ken Paxton, who is a man I've known before he ran for any office and have supported him in each race and met with him just a week ago, and there's so much more that is very fishy about this case. So thank you, Joanne, for reading the Watchdog Report. And uh, also I agreed concerning Ted Cruz, and I don't think that Ted Cruz could hire a better person than Joanne Fleming. So congratulations, Joanne. <laughs> the, uh, the debate last night was fun, but when I sat for over 30 minutes waiting for another question to Ted Cruz, I thought, oh my goodness, I thought this was supposed to be the um, truth-telling news station, um, but uh, certainly it, it didn't turn out that way. Uh, but um, I was very glad regardless that Ted Cruz did as well as he did and that the polls are showing he did so well and that the Frank Lunds uh, report immediately afterwards that many of you saw, people were changing their minds from Trump to Cruz, and uh, I thought that that was very good news too. A couple to Huckabee, but um, well, this is a very exciting time to be with you because we have an issue that Trump has brought out that Republicans are very reticent to talk about, and that is immigration. And I had an experience a few months ago asked by South by Southwest, and if any of you are familiar with that, it's a very liberal a group that meets in Austin, Texas. And you know, Austin is that place surrounded by Texas, but it's just like, oh my goodness, how did it get there? It's so liberal. And no one agreed with anything I had to say. And they told me that afterwards, but they were so glad I came and at least presented the other side. Um, so the issue of immigration has a lot of facts that we can understand. And one of the, uh, the first things I want us to learn to talk about, because I think as conservatives, I think as Republicans, I think as Christians, we need to learn to articulate the issue. And that was what I was so convinced of after speaking on this panel and being the Lone Ranger at South by Southwest. The three issues that we need to talk about are jobs, wages, and national security. Jobs, wages, and national security. I hope that when you walk away today, those are the three things that you're going to be talking about. We have all the, the facts and figures on our side when we look at these very key issues. And one of the key people and one of the key resources that I used was from, state, from U.S. Senator Jeff Sessions, who is a Republican from the state of Alabama in the United States Senate, and this was a report that he had prepared after the last election, and you're gonna see the relevance of that as we move along, of why he put this together and why he presented it to his fellow Republicans. So he talks about jobs, wages, and national security, and that's what we're going to learn more about today. 
Have you heard that Republicans don't like immigrants? I think until Donald Trump began to uh, explain this issue and also to show that the Hispanics support his side of the issue. And furthermore, Joanne and I's experience down at the border was that the Hispanics are crying for border security. They're crying out for safety and security for themselves and their families, and they're not getting it. And so um, when uh, we are accused of not liking immigrants, what do we talk about? We need to talk about jobs, wages, and national security. And um, the immigration reform uh, issue, if someone says, oh, well, as a Republican, I guess you don't support immigration reform. Oh, yes, we do. We focus on jobs, wages, and national security. So that is the, the quick response. Reagan's amnesty. As we all love Ronald Reagan and remember all of the great things that he did for our country, one of the things that he said, even, and, and Edwin Meese, his former attorney general, expresses this, the 1986 amnesty was the biggest mistake of his pres presidency. Why? Because it led to uncontrolled immigration, it led to the dramatic increase in welfare recipients, and it led to lower wages for the middle class. So we've gone to this extent of granting amnesty, it didn't work. And also, of course, the numbers exploded. He was told that this was only going to be granting amnesty to a few people, but that number of people exploded. U.S. immigration laws, it's very interesting for us to see how those have transitioned over the years. Back in 1921 was developed something that was called the National Origins Formula which was tied to immigration to the, um, the nationality according to the most recent census. And so from um, 1910 um, census, we knew that we wanted to have a, um, a melting pot as a country. We didn't um, think that it was healthy for our nation to just open the door and let the flood uh, come in of those who wanted to be here. We had a very purposeful approach in our immigration policy. Then our numbers of immigrant immigrants even declined, as you see, almost by four uh, million people from over the next 20 years as a result of this 1921 law when it was upheld. And then in 1965, there was a man in the White House, of course, by the name of LBJ, one Texan that we're not exactly proud of. And he said, look, we need to change this. And this was a bill then, the Immigration and Nationality Act, that was enacted in 1968 that ended what was implemented in 1921 and transitioned into a new idea, this Immigration and Nationality Act. And LBJ said about it, oh, it's not a revolutionary bill, it won't affect the lives of millions. And even his buddy Ted Kennedy said, the demographic mix would not be affected, really. And so those were the things that were said about that. But ever since that bill was enacted in 68, we have seen since 1970 a rapid increase in foreign-born population. And then, of course, 70 is followed by 86 with Reagan's amnesty. And from 1980 to, 19, to 2013, the immigrants grew from 14 million to 41 million. And so we can see that that policy that was not revolutionary certainly was. And it has not been good for America to go from 14 million to 41 million. That increase, according to the Investor's Business Daily, is a 324.5% increase. And it very clearly states, the Investor's Business Daily does, since 1970, we have become an irrational nation of hyperinflation as the foreign born among us have exploded from fewer than 10 million to more than 41 million as of 2013, a staggering increase of 324.5 million. So, a percent, and so we have seen that this is definitely going in the wrong direction. And then, of course, we know before the last major election that our president, who um, has done nothing really right that I can 
uh, point two, said that I'm the president, not the emperor. And then he responded to his own response by removing restrictions on those with limited terror ties. And he increased the admission of foreign workers by 100,000. He expedited chain migration from Haiti. And he extended amnesty for Hondurans and Nicaraguans and who's coming across the border today. Those from those two nations as well as Colombia, Guatemala, Central America is totally bringing their people and there's a huge uptick right now as I was hearing on the news coming over here today from Central America across our border illegally, entire families. And oftentimes, as Joanne and I saw, it'll be a woman and her child, and who's gonna send her back? The Mexicans don't want her. And so here we are with a woman and her child that we saw treated as queen for a day and taken care of forevermore by you and I, the taxpayers. They attempted to recruit now the um, uh, Obama administration, illegals for our military. At the same time, we are laying off our military members. We are saying to illegals, come and serve in our military and that will give you automatic citizenship. And so this man is acting like an emperor and who's gonna stop him? I am just so grateful for one man who's telling the truth about all of this and that is Senator Ted Cruz. So thank goodness for that. The amnesty was um, part of the uh, defense bill, the Democrats labeled Republican opposition to it, xenophobic, and uh, they wanted to allow all of them to serve in our military, and on May 15th, the House voted 221 to 202 to strip the immigration amendment. So there is not that amendment, we're still laying off soldiers, and we're still taking in illegals, it doesn't seem to matter what the laws say or how many amendments are put on defense bills. This man, as Senator Ted Cruz has said, is lawless. He ignores the law, he refuses to remove illegals who are here already. The catch and release program that Joanne and I saw in full force while we were along the border. 100,000 illegals arrived just this year and they've been freed into the United States. And as I say, there's an uptick right now going on. The new Department of Homeland Security funds facilitate the transfer of illegals then throughout the United States. I was talking to a member of the press recently and during an interview and off the record about a different topic, which was illegal immigration. I said, do you know that Obama is sending buses down to the border in order to pick up these people and cart them all over the nation? No, I didn't know. So hopefully he will start doing some homework on that. And if you go to a website, website called welcometousa.gov, this is, of course, the Department of Homeland Security website, you can find a job, you can learn English, you can learn about the United States, you can find a place to live, you can get a green card, get a driver's license, and get a social security number. Oh, with all of that, do you think they're voting? Hmm, yes. And yet we're hearing that that's not happening. The big debate in Dallas radio talk show this morning as I was driving here was the fact that some now are saying, we don't have sanctuary cities. I don't know what you're talking about. Mayor of Fort Worth said we don't have one. Mayor of Dallas said we don't. And that lesbian mayor down in Houston said we don't have a sanctuary city. And yet the police who are on the ground are told, catch and release, and don't ask about citizenship. And so they're just playing Obama's game. They're doing it. They're just telling us that they're not. I think we're smarter to figure that out. This is one of the buses along the border, and asylum is the new passport. Now we had an, a Somali man who was indicted for human smuggling of East Africans, including Somalis with ties to terror groups from Brazil and across the Mexican border and into Texas. So we are the number one target, and many of these people are part of the terrorist group, the Islamic terrorist group from Somalia, and we also see in our news stories what's going on in places like Minnesota. Who would have thought that far away from the border? But in Minnesota, they have entire communities of Somalis, and they are infiltrating the system in order to overturn from within exactly what we have been warned about that Islam is here to do. And they will not take, for example, someone with a seeing eye dog. 
into a taxi if they're a taxi driver because Islam hates dogs. And so there are so many things that um, are being disrupted. In May of uh, 2015, the World Daily had a story exposing the Department of Homeland Security busing illegal Somalis from the Mexican border. So if it's in the news at World Net Daily, I think it's a bit more trustworthy than some of our other news sources. Now, the Republicans in Congress could have defunded Obama's amnesty, just like our US senator tried to defund Obamacare. We could have done it. So on February 28, just to kind of roll this out for you, they voted for a one-week extension why did they do that? Oh, because Bibi Netanyahu was coming later to speak on March the 3rd. And so on March the 3rd, they bring it up after Prime Minister of Israel Netanyahu speaks and everyone is focused on the content of his speech. And they vote then to fun fully fund the Department of Homeland Security, which enables them to send buses down to the border and prearrange, they have Somalis then coming across. It's like they're going on a field trip because they're home free as soon as they step foot on that bus. We set them up in communities, we give them language, we give them housing, we give them food, we give them everything they need to live as Americans forevermore. Green cards, you've seen it all. So, if we had, and this was a point made in the debate last night, the Gang of Eight immigration bill. It would have grown our immigrant numbers so that nearly one in six U.S. residents would be foreign born. How, how does that make you feel? Scary. Yeah, it is scary. The results according to the Congressional Bu Budget Office, again, come back to our three issues. Lower wages, and I've just heard how now we have more unemployed than we have immigrants. There are a larger number of immigrants um, coming into the country to even top the number of unemployed. And then it's reducing our per capita gross national product. So it's a very negative effect on the people of America to have open borders. And to consider that since 911, and a president at that time, Bush, and I'm going to step out of line here and say, please do not give us another Bush president. Please do not. Since 911, and Islam is called a religion of peace, and it's like, really? They just killed more than 3,000 Americans. And this has been a war against America for generations. And yet he calls it a religion of peace. And while we have a current president who bows before the Saudi king, we also had a president before him who held hands with him, which is an Islamic thing, to hold hands, men and men. Looks rather weird if you want to ask me. But we have had 1.6 million immigrants from Muslim countries since 911. Something very wrong with that picture. Robert Rector of the Heritage Foundation says that on average, low-skill immigrant families receive over 30,000 a year in government benefits and services while paying only 10,500 in taxes. And that's very unlikely in my mind that they're even paying over 10,000 in taxes. So what does that do? When I look at my son, his wife, and my five grandchildren, they are having to make up the difference here. It takes the entire net tax payments of one college-educated family to pay for the net benefits received by one low-skill immigrant family. I don't think there's one family in this room that would say this is good for America. And that cheap labor for those corporations those builders is good for America. Because you know what? If there's not that bricklayer and there's not that roofer who's illegal, then you know what? They're going to be people who are Americans who are going to fill those spots. They're jobs waiting to be had. The same thing with going down to Mexico and pulling up those from Mexico in order to wring the necks of chickens. 
and pull the feathers. Americans will fill these jobs. They line up for these jobs in places around the country when they are made available. But right now, we've got illegals holding those positions in mass. The Census Bureau estimates that immigration growth is driven more by legal immigration than illegal immigration. The only way that can happen is when we have a lawless president who is just implementing his own will as an emperor. 20 million immigrants in 1990. 78 million or one in five by 2060, 108 million more than in 2010, equivalent to adding populations of California, Texas, New York, Florida, and Massachusetts. We cannot keep going this way. In 2015, those who are 65 years of age and older, in 2015, this year, represent 13% of the immigrant, immigrants. But by 2060, it's estimated that 26% of those people will be over 65 years old. What does that do to a, a social security system that the monies didn't go into a lockbox like we were promised, and it's going bankrupt? So this issue is having a lot to do with our economy. So, you might ask, how many legally are coming into this nation every year right now? Legally. If we're going to talk immigration reform, how many are legally coming in every year? Well, we have 700,000 who are guest workers. We have a half million who are foreign students. 70,000 who are asylum seekers and refugees. And those numbers are very, very suspicious. From Africa, we have 12,000. From East Asia, 17,000. Europe, and so only 2,000 from Europe. Latin American, Caribbean, 5,000. The Near East and Southeast Asia, 31,000. And unallocated, 3,000. Since 2000, nearly 30 million visas have been issued, either permanent immigrants or temporary foreign workers since 2000, 30 million. When we're a nation of a little over 300 million, this makes a big difference, folks. We cannot sustain this. The numbers just do not work. All net employment gains since the recession have gone to foreign workers. This is very much in keeping with what they're saying. There are now more unemployed people um, uh, the, the number of immigrants uh, surpassed the number of unemployed. We cannot sustain this. We are not able to absorb more. There's a point where you just hit the maximum that you can bring in. Each year, the United States admits a million mostly lesser skilled permanent immigrants with green cards. A million every year. So what's in it for illegals? Work permits, so security numbers, we saw all of this on that website. But it's good for you to see them again. What's in it for them? They cross the border, they're home free. Are they coming here for that opportunity? Is it just jobs that they want? I think this is showing very clearly, no. It's because we have a welfare system that is serving as a magnet. Work permits, Social Security numbers, Medicare, and, and getting Social Security, free tax credits, and taking jobs and benefits from struggling American workers. And you put all these people in Obamacare. I, you know, my husband's in the healthcare community, and I'm telling you, it is really sad. The Obamacare folks are really unhappy with the huge deductibles that they have. They can't pay those deductibles. So what happens with the doctors? They eat it. You don't put food on the table this way. There are more seekers than jobs. And um, the uh, lower wages, and this is something that came from uh, Harvard, a Harvard professor I found uh, quite interesting. 
Current immigration rates produce an annual net loss of $402 billion for American workers who compete with foreign labor. So our wages are definitely going down and a higher unemployment and a heavier tax burden to provide for those immigrant perks. And who pays for it? Who paid for Obama's executive orders? The greatest line last night was to get rid of every one of Obama's executive orders the first day he's in office. That was the greatest line. The corporate lobbyists paid $1.5 billion in order for Obama to do what he did to the American people. Granting amnesty to illegals, he collapsed enforcement, and it benefits, of course, Democrats and their political machine who then bring in people who will be voting because they have social security numbers. So Bill Gates, one of the culprits, laid off 18,000 workers the same week that he co-authored an op-ed demanding more foreign labor. This is huge. This is huge. And this is hitting Republicans and Democrats because those guys give big bucks to political campaigns. So you've got to understand that we've got to focus on our issues on immigration reform. 50,000 layoffs were instituted while lobbying Congress for more H-1B foreign worker visas. By who? Hewlett Packard, Cisco, American Express, Procter & Gamble, T-Mobile, companies that we all know. The internet technology pleads for more Americans to pursue IT degrees, yet the jobs are given to foreigners who are paid less. Not only are they paid less, they are indentured because they come here on these visas and they cannot leave that job and go to any other job out there as an American could. And so this is really uh, very unfair to the workers, but very much what Bill Gates and Microsoft are part and parcel of. Here is a very interesting expose of the fact that we do have enough gradu graduates we do have enough graduates in science, technology, and engineering, and mathematics. American students are getting these degrees, and they are being called to get more of these degrees in order to fill these jobs, and yet, look at this. Census Bureau confirmed that three in four American STEM grads, science, technology, engineering, math, STEM grads, do not hold a job in their fields. Again, why? Because of the H-1B visas. 11 million Americans are affected by this. Guest workers make up two-thirds of all IT hires. And employers are demanding more. How many are supposed to be here legally? Look at how they play with these numbers. 65,000 are in the general pool. So every year, 65,000 more H-1B visas. Then you add 20,000 with graduate degrees from U.S. universities are given H-1B visas. And then you add to that an unlimited number for nonprofit profit and government research labs and universities. There's no cap on those. And then many employers are exempt from the cap. In 2012 alone, there were 263,000. Oops, look at that, 65,000 and 20,000 and, you know, no cap for nonprofits and Others are exempt for the cap. 263,000 in one year received H-1B visas. How many are currently in the United States? It is estimated that there are between 650 and 750,000 persons with H-1B visas. And folks, they are buying entire communities in the Dallas area. You now have to go through Muslim communities in Dallas. There are entire communities of Chinese who are coming over on these visas. His unilateral amnesty, Obama's unilateral amnesty, gave work permits also now to their spouses. 
So you can double all these numbers. That's not good for our business community. And that's not the only visa, the H-1B. You also have the L-1 visa and the F-1 visa. One allows employees to transfer from abroad. So if there is an Englishman who has a job in London and he wants to come to the United States, then he gets an L-1 visa, he comes here. I met a man in Houston who came here on such a visa and now he's a citizen. <laughs> um, so it's a pretty good deal for them. Um, they also have other controversial programs within that. They overstaying on visas. There is no exit policy. So in 2012 alone, we know that there were 250,000 people with visas who overstayed. 99% of illegal immigrants are beyond the reach of immigration law. 167,000 are convicted criminal aliens at large in the United States and 30,000 convicted criminal aliens were freed by the administration in 2014. This is not a good setup. So, how does this play politically? Because that's what you and I can do about this. First of all, don't let anyone tell you, and I think Donald Trump has proven, if there's one thing that man with the funny hair and the flappy mouth can, can take to the bank, that is that immigration is a winning issue for us. And you're about to see how it has been also, it's not just, and yet we're being told, you ask the RNC, you ask the RPT about immigrants, shut up about it, shut up about it. We, and unless you want to talk about a pathway to citizenship, you just shut up about immigration. It's a losing issue for us. That's what they tell you. Folks, it's not a losing issue. If we cave on this, then we cave on giving the next presidency to Hillary Clinton or whoever, if she's not in jail by then. The grassroots will just get another loser like we've had in the past, said Phyllis Schlafly, the national founder and CEO of Eagle Forum. The annual flow of one point, and these numbers are low, you're gonna see on another estimate after this slide. The annual flow of 1.1 million legal immigrants under the current system means more than 5 million new potential voters by 2024 and more than 8 million by 2028. Do you think the conservatives or Republicans are going to win any elections in the future if this is sustained? In Investors Business Daily, the numbers are even worse. This author says that sending letters, they are sending letters now to all uh, to uh, 9 million green card holders urging them to naturalize prior to the 2016 election. 9 million can turn a vote. PDQ. So, just days before the election, to see how forked tongue some of our leadership is, and if we don't start telling the truth, then we cannot stand behind Ted Cruz with a straight face. Ted Cruz is telling the truth. Are we going to stand with him? We will do everything we can, said Wright's Priebus, Priebus, the RNC chairman. We will do everything we can to make sure Obama's emperor amnesty edict doesn't happen. We can't allow it to happen, and we won't let it happen. I don't know how to be any stronger than that. I'm telling you, everything we can do to stop it, we will. That's what Reince Priebus said. So then we, the people, in the 2014 elections went out and we voted for Republicans. Exit polls even showed three of four voters said that they were voting because of the immigration issue. Even the National Republican Senatorial Committee did a poll. And on their website, they say, we're working together to build a Senate that will work for the people again. Really? Is that what we've seen with a liar as the majority leader? Their poll found that the American people are right to be concerned about their jobs and wages, and elected officials should put the needs of American workers first. That's what the poll showed them. This is how they knew that they were going to win elections, by talking about these three points. The second point was the first goal of immigration policy needs to be getting unemployed Americans back to work, not importing more low-wage workers to replace them. 
Here we go with those visas, those H-1B visas. And the third point was immigration policy needs to serve the interests of the nation as a whole. Not a few billionaire CEOs and immigration activists lobbying for open borders. I'd love to see a study done of the thousands of people that Trump talks about employing. I'd love to see what his numbers show. I mean, last night it was exposed that he's had several bankruptcies. Not he personally. Companies have gone bankrupt. He's used the laws, he said. Well, there are four essential questions that we need to be asking. Is America a sovereign nation that has the right to control its borders and decide who comes to live and work here? Yes. Should American immigration laws serve the just interests of the country and its citizens? Yes. Thirdly, do those citizens have the right to expect and demand that the laws passed by their elected representatives be enforced? Yes. yes. And finally, why did we elect representatives if not to serve Americans? So the conservative approach would be to slow down on immigrant visas and to focus on what? I want you to say it with me. Jobs, uh, wages, right. national right. security. When we focus on those three things, we're talking about immigration reform on our terms. Don't ever let another Republican get by with telling you that's too hot a topic, we're not going to go there, or shut up about it unless you're going to talk about a path to citizenship. Tom Meckler, chairman of the RPT. That's his rhetoric. We've got to stop it. So we're talking about a lot and what nots to do. What should we be doing? How about implementing universal E-Verify? I thought it was so interesting this morning. Joanne, you'll love this one. I think that it is Dan Patrick, our lieutenant governor, who thinks now that we should get rid of sanctuary cities. And where was that during the session? I was texting with the senator who carried the bill. Couldn't get the votes in the Senate in order to bring it out onto the floor of the Senate. That could have been helped by Dan Patrick. It could have been helped. We can also end the tax credit and welfare payments to illegals. Yes. If you can't prove citizenship, why are you on the dole? End catch and release with mandatory detention and expedited deportations. End mandatory registration for unaccompanied alien minors. Send them back home. I was asked by the county judge in Dallas County after I had just finished a TV interview and he was just going, Kathy, we got something we, we can work on together. And I'm like, howdy doody, what you got up your sleeve today? If you saw this guy, you'd say he's howdy doody. And he said, we have got all these children coming across the border. You and I can work together on caring for these children. I said, Mr. Jenkins, what we need to do is reunite those children with their parents in their homelands. <laughs> in asylum and refugee loopholes. You know, isn't it interesting to you that those who are killing Christians are getting asylum in this nation? And yet Christians are still languishing in the federal funds to sanctuary cities. Empower local officials to coordinate with ICE officers. That's the Arizona law. Suspend visas to countries with high overstay rates or those that won't uh, repatriate criminal aliens. Mandate completion of an uh, exit entry system. And finally, establish cr criminal penalties for visa overstays. These are issues that are already implemented in countries like Mexico. <laughs> where it's very, very difficult to get citizenship. And yet, look at the millions who are here today. And Jeb Bush said it again last night. He thinks that these people are, it's an act of love to cross the border illegally. And that they're escaping in a way that they, they uh, are, are going to get hope. So during the last legislative session, the bill that uh, Joanne worked so hard in drafting, such a brain she has, thank God, and our Senator Bob Hall 
was the author of was a bill to um, have border security. Uh, I saw the bill die in, um, in the House. Uh, it did pass the Senate. It was uh, really watered uh, down uh, from the way that we wanted it. But anyway, it was a compact for border security and immigration enforcement, and I know that you've heard a lot about that here, and we're so grateful for Senator Bob Hall, one of the A grades, as is your state, Senate, your state rep, Matt Schaefer, so we're so grateful for those who get A's like Apple on our scorecard. Um, the uh, border compact um, would have done several things, enforce current immigration laws, um, as I say, it passed in the, the Senate, but did not pass in the Senate, or in the House, and then also he had another bill that would have protected our grid. This is something that we are working overtime on already in order to uh, have, uh, uh, be ready for it in the next legislative session. It was changed from a law to protect our grid to a study. We're gonna study the issue. Why did that happen? Because the utility companies did not want to have to protect our grid from terror attacks. So it would have cost them some bucks. They can take all the bucks from the federal gov government, the TARP money, in order to put a 16 gigabyte computer called a smart meter on your house, but they don't want to have to pay to upgrade um, and protect us from terror attacks. E-Verify uh, would have required E-Verify for state agencies. That did pass. Um, I had here that it died. Um, it did on, on that particular calendar, but anyway, it did pass. Um, Donna Campbell in the state senate um, would have um, ended the DREAM Act that allows illegals to attend college with in-state tuition and working with her, there was just no way that she could get the votes in the Senate to pass that law, which is very uh, unfortunate. And then ending sanctuary cities, this is the one that now we have a lieutenant governor who is like, oh, if I can jump in front of that TV camera, I wanna do it. Now that Donald Trump has made this a big issue, um, but the fact is we couldn't get the votes in the Senate during the session to pass it. So with that, I know that some of you have questions and I would, Love to hear your comments as well, and I think there were cards that you have. We do have cards. My check one, two, there we go. Uh, question number one, and if you do have questions, please write them down on the note cards on the table. Question number one, what role does the National Chamber of Commerce play in the illegal immigration apocalypse? <laughs> well, the National, um, Unfortunately, the Chamber of Commerce at the state level and the national level are very much for open borders. And uh, they don't want, the, all they want is a path to citizenship, the only thing they advocate for. And furthermore, and even worse, they do not want a religious liberty bill. They did advocate for homosexual marriage. So when you're wrong on one issue for political reasons, you can pretty much see a consistency. They're gonna be wrong on a lot of other ones too. Absolutely. Uh, do you have any info on the number or percentage of the crossers of our southern border who speak fluent, number one, Arabic or Pashtun? I don't know those numbers, but I will tell you this. The majority coming across our border today are not Mexicans. They are from Central America, they are from the Middle East, and we know this because of the few that we can apprehend. We know that they are not English speakers and they are not even Spanish speakers. And we also know that there are some terrorist countries in the Middle East who are sending over to Bolivia their citizens. They are getting a little bit of Spanish and then they are coming across the border illegally in order to infiltrate and overturn our government from within, which is an Islamic act. Third question, where can we get a copy of the numbers you have used? I will be glad to send this PowerPoint to anyone who wants it, and I can send it to one person, and you can send it to everyone in the room, if you'd like. Fourth question, uh, can the $30,000 of government benefits uh, in the illegal household be broken down into specific benefit programs? I think number one, Medicaid, two, food stamps, three, 
unknown. Right, and I don't know that. How, I, I don't know those numbers. I have not broken that down. Great question, though. But we know that we have a magnet, and there is no other country in the world that you can come to and receive as much free stuff. Are there any additional questions? Or comments? Ladies and gentlemen, our speaker.